Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 29. Jeremiah, chapter number 29. I'm going to read verse number 11 through verse number 13 uh, as we open. Keep your Bibles open. Don't close them up yet because we're going to be looking at uh, this throughout the morning. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be referencing back. The Bible says, For I know the thoughts I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Amen. Aren't you glad God has thoughts toward us? You ever been away from someone? They may not realize it, but you're thinking about them. And then God's thoughts are toward us, even when we're busy in our days. The Word of God goes on down to say, Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me when you search for me with your whole heart. Amen. I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. Amen. If you read, some commentators have said it this way, that they are plans for good and not for disaster. Praise God. Thank God that His plans are for good and not for disaster and for our future to have a hope. Uh, how many of you have probably heard this verse before? Maybe you've memorized it or maybe you've uh, reminded yourself of it on, on occasion because, uh, you know, it's one of those scriptures that, that we tell ourselves of the promises of God that He's thinking about us, that He thinks peace and not evil, and that God has plans for our future. And so my intent uh, this morning is this. We are in the last Sunday here of, Fe of January. We'll be approaching February. Uh, I, I've tried to, uh, throughout this month, uh, focus upon sanctification, drawing closer to God, and that God has this year in His hands. And so I want us to see that God does have this year in His hands, even at the beginning, no matter what happens. That's very open-ended, and none of us know what this year has for any of us for our loved ones. And so, uh, as we look, the Word of God reminds us that His thoughts are toward us. They're thoughts of peace and not of evil. And to give us an expected or a hopeful end. And so, uh, as we look at this, I think it's only fair that we look at this whole Scripture within context because we have a lot of uh, preachers that will like to preach the prosperity doctrine that God certainly does uh, have our life in His hands and that He has an expected end for us. It's, it's, it's thoughts of peace and good things, Brother Eli, and, and it's hopeful. But, but, but the, the part that they neglect to tell us, really uh, jumping back up, I, 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 I have to tell you that I love what the Bible says starting in verse number 10. But we really need to go back up uh, in, in the verse and, and look higher at the context of what's happening. And so let's look really uh, let's look up even as far as verse number 7. Jeremiah, he writes, and seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you uh, to be carried away captive, and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall you have peace. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your uh, diviners who be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which you have ca uh, you, you, you caused to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. I need to tell you that the promises of God and the things that God has for us sometimes isn't for right now. 
So everything that is being said, Jeremiah is speaking and he's talking. Uh, and he said, there, there are some things that, that are going to happen. And God has you in mind and he has thoughts of peace towards you. And he's going to give you an expected end. Maybe some of you are in, a, in the dark night of the soul right now. And you're saying, wow, that's the verse I need to hear. But there's good news, there's bad news. The good news is God has an expected end, and God has a plan for you, and God has peace for you, and God has a hopeful future for you. The bad news is it may not be right now. Sometimes we are going to go through seasons, and then God is going to bring to pass those things that we were hoping for. We'll talk a little bit more about it uh, this morning. You know, the, the purpose of these verses are really to give hope to us in the middle of our suffering. And uh, if we are having difficulty, to tell us to hang on because difficulty won't last forever. And he wants us to have hope in our lives. I want you to know that God is still the God of hope. I can't believe no one didn't give me an amen. God is still the God of hope. God still gives hope no matter what's going on in our life. And we are still His people. And He still has a plan for us. But when we look a little deeper in the story, we find that Jeremiah, he's a prophet of God that's being sent during this time. But there were other prophets as well. And unfortunately, Jeremiah was the only true prophet. The others were false prophets. And uh, uh, for about a period of 23 years, Jeremiah has been bringing the word of God uh, that God has been giving him to the people of Judah and, uh, uh, and, and Israel. And, and uh, he said, listen, uh, people, uh, this is the word from God. But they didn't like hearing the word that God had for them. How many of you know that sometimes when we hear the truth, it's really not what we want to hear, but it's what we do need to hear. You know, uh, you, you, you ask someone their opinion on something, and maybe we already have fabricated in our mind what we would like for them to say, but, but they bring about and declare to us the truth. And, and so sometimes it's really hard for us to take. Listen, Judah and Israel were living in a time where they were indulging in sin. There was idol worship going on, and it was so easy to listen to the false prophets because they were allowing them to do whatever they wanted to do. And so Jeremiah comes on the scene, and he's the true prophet, and he's, he's warning the people of what God had said, and they don't like it. Amen. And so, listen, if, if, if God said, if you don't like uh, to listen to Jeremiah, I'm going to send Babylon, and they're going to destroy you, and they're going to take you captive. The people still didn't believe the message from Jeremiah. And so uh, uh, they, they, they pick and they cho chose what they wanted to hear. And uh, let me just stop and say, really belief is a matter of choice. What you believe is your choice. And uh, we can choose to take God's word and believe it, or we can choose to believe a lie. It really is about our choice, what we believe. All of you have heard it. I've heard it likewise, where people say, well, I really don't believe God means that. You know, we're living in a very, and, and I don't want to reiterate for those who were here on Tuesday evening, we, 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 we were studying about hell. And uh, we live in a very uh, sensitive, secret church, in a very uh, uh, church world that uh, needs to be culturally diversified. And so folks don't like to hear preaching on hell, so, so they think it's just a uh, figurative. And we talked uh, as the rich man and Lazarus, and it was more than a parable because Jesus gave names to these people. It was truth. And so uh, folks can say, well, I don't believe in hell. Uh, you can choose to believe what you want to believe, but the authority of God's word says that there are two places where every living soul will spend eternity. It will either be in heaven with God or it will be in eternity in hell, which God has never designed for people, but people choose hell. When you re re uh, neglect and reject the truth of God's word, then you neglect uh, the, 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 the narrow way that leads to heaven. God doesn't send people to hell. People choose where they will spend eternity. Amen. And so here it is. Uh, the prophet is preaching, 
you know, it's either one or the other. You're going to listen to the truth of God or you're going to listen to a false prophet. And so Judah and Jerusalem, they're listening to a false prophet over the truth of God's word. And it's because they chose what they would believe. They chose to ignore God. They chose to ignore the man of God. It was a choice. Their choice didn't change the truth. That's why churches, folks don't want to go to church. They don't make time for God because they don't want to hear truth. Or they go to a seeker-sensitive church where the truth isn't preached and it's just a, a, a diversified word that, 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 that has no truth in it. Yes, Brother Eli, it's true. People want to feel good. Listen, if we don't feel uncomfortable in church at times, I'm not saying every moment of church we need to feel uncomfortable. That's not my goal. But we need to feel uncomfortable at times because we're in the presence of a holy God. Amen. Hell is what it is because God is who He is. He's holy. Amen. And hell is the opposite of the holiness of God. And so uh, uh, God said it's going to happen. Babylon came and destroyed Judah and Israel. And, and, and they took the people captive. And it lasted for 70 years. And so... Uh, uh, here it is. What we choose to believe tonight, amen, it needs to be based upon truth. And so Jeremiah, he preached without any results, but he was still preaching truth. It didn't matter. I want you to know that you can preach the truth of God's Word even though you may not see results. It doesn't mean that we need to compromise the truth of God's Word. That's right. Because truth becomes a choice of what someone will believe. Their lives have been taken from them. Now they're ready to listen. They were servants in a land where they had to obey somebody else. Now their children have, have been uprooted and, and, and it would never have happened had they listened to Jeremiah. But, but now they're ready to listen to Jeremiah. However, now there springs up a false prophet. Jeremiah says you're going to be here 70 years in captivity. The false prophet said, now wait a second. I'm going to give the word, and, 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 and the word is this, that in two, uh, you're, you're only going to be here a, a short time, two years. And so Jeremiah said, okay, to the false prophet, uh, uh, we're going to see who is the one true prophet. And he looks at the false prophet, and he says to him, listen, within a year, you're going to die because you're a false prophet. So although the people chose to listen to the false prophet because it's what they wanted to hear, Unfortunately, Hannah and I became the false prophet, and it's a better message, and it's, it's a more tickling and a comfortable message. So they believe. Uh, they believe the false prophet. They don't want to be in slavery for seven years. So Jeremiah said, listen, Hannah and I, the Lord hath not sent you, but you have lied to the people. So we found within two months, Hannah and I died. The truth. The truth. God showed that he is still giving the truth, even if it's not what we like. This morning, this is my message. We need to be careful who we choose to believe when it comes to the authority of God's Word. There's lots of people who give lots of interpretations, but what does the authority of God's Word back up? So here it is, Israel's are they're in the early stage of living in oppression. They're living as servants in another land, summer without their children, separated from their family. Their temple worship is gone. They want it to be all done and over with. And I love what Jeremiah begins to speak to, to the people through the spirit and the presence of God. Let's jump up to verse number four because I think this is so applicable for us as we are finishing up January and we're embracing 2018. The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all who are carried away uh, captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. So Jer Jeremiah is speaking. He says, Listen. He said, I have a word from God and it's for all those that's been carried away and is in captivity. And it's because God has allowed this to happen. He said, build you houses and dwell in them and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. We're carried away into captivity. And what is God telling us? We want out of captivity. 
captivity. And now here comes the prophet. And he's saying to us, build houses and plant gardens and plant vineyards and, and, and love your house and take care of your house and eat the vineyards and the gardens that you plant. He said, take you wives and beget your sons and your daughters. And take wives for your, your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters that ye may be increased there and not diminished. Listen, listen. I want to tell you something. Some folks have been praying for healing and God hasn't healed you yet. Will it come on this side of eternity? Only God knows. But we still have a hope in God. What do we do while we're waiting on the healing? Some of you have struggled with wanting answers from God. And some people will say, oh, well, hey, uh, name it and claim it. I, I believe that sometimes when we, we do in prayer, we have to believe by faith that God is going to bring the answers. But if He doesn't, what are we going to do? We're going to keep praying. And you know what? We're going to keep, keep being faithful in the place that God has placed us in. Amen. You want a better job, but the doors aren't opening. You're praying for your family to be saved, and you're not seeing the results of the fruits of them being saved. You're struggling financially, and some pre preachers are preaching a uh, prosperity message. Uh, and it's not lighting up. And God, what's going on? Let me tell you what. Because God does have a plan for your life. And don't you ever forget it. But if the answers aren't coming and you feel like you're in captivity, don't go listening to a false prophet. But listen to the authority of God's Word. Amen. That while we are in this season, we are going to continue to live and we're going to continue to be faithful. What did God tell them? He said in verse number 7, And seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall you have peace. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners uh, who, who be in the midst of you deceive you, well, neither hearken to your dreams which you have, uh, which you caused to be dreamed. What was the prophet saying to, to, by, by God? He was saying this. He was saying, yes, I know. Some of you are away from your family. You're away from your parents. You're away from your siblings. You maybe are away from a spouse. What are you going to do? Uh, you're away from your land that you love. There's there's no place for you to go and worship like there is there in Jerusalem and Judah. What are you going to do? God said, I want you to marry your sons and your daughters. I want you to build houses. I want you to plant gardens. And I want you to pray. And I want you to pray for the people that you're captive with that you may be kept in peace as you have peace with these people. Listen, I want to tell you I'm not here preaching a prosperity message this morning. I'm telling you that I believe that God wants to do something in our lives. Will it happen in January of 2018? Or will it happen six months from now in 2018? Or maybe it's in 2019? Or maybe it's farther on the calendar? But what are we going to do until we see the answers? We're going to be faithful. <coughs> If you have to walk with a limp because your leg hurts, you're going to be faithful. Plant your gardens. Build your houses. Let your sons and your daughters marry and have children. You're going to live life and live life to its fullest while you wait on God to move for you. Amen. I think sometimes we think that we need to stop life. Amen, God, I'm expecting you to move, move or move me. And when God says, listen, if you want to see me work and move in your life, the delegated time is not here. But what I want you to do is be faithful to what you have. You may say, Brother Seville, I, I don't like my, my job. Start praying for those people around about you. You may say, Brother Seville, I don't like my family situation. How about pray for your family around about you? You may say, Brother Seville, I don't like my health situation. Well, maybe God has you going to that doctor's office or wherever you've got to go because God is using you as a light and a tool. So be faithful. Amen. Am I saying God's not going to 
deliver you from a, that job, or I'm not saying God's not going to heal you, or God's not going to change your family situation. No, we hope and believe in God. But until He comes through, the message from the prophet was, listen, be faithful where you are for the next 70 years. Wow! What would you like to hear? Two years, you'll be out of here. Or be faithful for the next 70 years. I know what I, I choose. I know what I don't want to choose. But the truth of God's word wasn't the two year mark. The truth of God's word was in the 70 mark. Amen. So, for 70 years, Be faithful in Babylon. I'm going to do a good work. And I'm going to cause you to return to the place where you want to go. But while you're waiting to get there, be faithful. I think then we better understand what Jeremiah writes when he says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said while you're there, God's thinking for you about you. God's thinking about you. He said, thoughts of peace. It may not be where you want. It may not be your answer of deliverance. But God is thinking about you. And so hold on and wait for his time. To give you an expected end. Listen, his thoughts toward us are always good and peaceable. But his thoughts toward us is because he wants us to remain faithful. I know I share this a lot, but can you imagine when you're wanting to have a child? That's our story. We wanted to have a child. We wanted to have it fast. We wanted to have it on our time. But what are we going to do until God provides a child? That was a life lesson for me. You're going to be faithful until God provides. Amen. You know what we did? We just were faithful. We didn't like that time, Sister God. We didn't like. We didn't like that five year. That's a long time to wait. Five years is nothing to sneeze at. But God said, just wait and be faithful. What else can we do but wait and be faithful? He said, then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray to me, and I will hearken unto, unto you. And you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with your whole heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nation. You see, God does have some big plans for our life. He has some great futures, and it's going to be done, and it's going to happen. But sometimes we just have to hold on to what happens. Come on. Just holding on to what happens. I don't know what your specific things are. And I'm not here to discourage you And in this beginning month of 2018. This, this should not be a discouragement at all. This is truth. This should encourage you that even though I may wait until 2018 or through, through 2018, I know that if I ask God, He's going to be found of me and He's going to bring me an expected end. Listen, maybe it'll be days, maybe it'll be weeks, maybe it'll be months, maybe it'll be a couple of years, but the thing that we have to remind ourselves, the reality of the promise, sometimes we have to wait on our answer. But it is a promise of deliverance and it is a promise of peace in the midst of our storm. God is going to be there. So whatever you're waiting on and you're seeking God for, God, when, when is the time for me to move or when is the answer for me? I just want to encourage you. Let God give you peace in the interim. Let 
God be your peace in the middle of the storm, knowing that He is going to bring the answer. Amen. 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 He will. He will bring the answer. Amen. But hold on. What happened to Joseph? He had to keep holding and trusting even when it seemed like he was so close and yet it was pulled out from under him and yet so far away. But God brought him his expected end. But he was faithful in every inch of the journey in Potiphar's house and in the prison even when he's forgotten about for an interpreting a dream in God's time. God brought him about. Amen. Amen. God will bring it about, my friend. God will bring it about. Keep praying. Let me tell you this. And keep seeking peace. Listen here. If you have odd against someone or someone has odd against you, first of all, if you have odd, you need to make it right. If they have odd, it's on them. But you have to keep seeking peace. How would you like to be captive in an alliance? And God says, I want you to be peaceable. And I want you to keep peace among these people. Keep being peaceable. Even in the interim. Keep seeking God. Keep coming to church. Keep knowing that you are going to be it. And most of all, keep knowing that you're a child of God. And that He has an expected end for His children. Sister Holly, if you come to the piano this morning, good news, bad news. The good news is, is that God is working. And that His thoughts are towards you. They're thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. And if we would call upon Him and pray, He's going to hearken unto Him. And if we seek Him with all our heart, we will find Him. But don't get sidetracked. Listen to the false prophet. Listen, I don't believe God's plan is for everybody here to be a millionaire. Sorry if you lose out with me. That's what the false prophets say. But God does have a plan and a purpose. And while you're waiting on that, keep being faithful. So what do we do while we're waiting on God? Build your house. Let your sons and your daughters marry and have children. Plant gardens and enjoy the fruit of the garden, the vegetables. There are 70 seasons for the lot. That's a lot of produce. <laughs> but God just simply called them to be faithful and be peaceful to I bring the expected end. God has an end for all of us that's expected and good. Sometimes we just have to wait on it. Let 2018 be a time of waiting on God. Expect and believe. You know what, Sister Alice, if someone else's boat comes in, I've got to rejoice with them. Their prayers are answered, Sister, Sister Timmy, and mine are not. I've got to rejoice with them. That's being faithful, Sister God. Another one, I've got to rejoice and be glad. And know that I've got to be faithful where I'm at until God brings the plan for me. Amen. 2018 may just be building and planting and reaping. But it's okay for being faithful to God in that interim. But when He brings the expected end, He will bring it to those who have listened to the truth of His Word, and made a choice, and believed it, and followed it through. We choose truth this morning and follow it through because God has a plan for you. If you would, Come find a place of prayer this morning. I choose truth. I choose to wait. I choose to be faithful to a God who has my life in his hands. Let's gather in this morning.